Greetings, this is Tim, welcome back. I originally planned a video about accessories and upgrades you can print for your Anchor Make M5. But after several poor prints, I decided it was time to replace my nozzle. I was also aware of several posts on Reddit where the users had shared experiences of changing the nozzle resulting in the failure of two screws in the printer. So I decided to remove my hot end, including the heat sink, the heating element, and the nozzle, and replace it with the second hot end that had come with my printer. I then planned to replace the nozzle and the original hot end outside of the printer. To do this, I needed the Anchor Make M5 Hot End Service Tool Block by Spiggy Tech. It's available on printables, a couple other sites. I will put a link in the description of this video. It is highly recommended that if you own an Anchor Make M5, that you have this print on hand. I found it essential to making this job easy. I also would like to say while I was recording this video, I was very focused on the task at hand. So I didn't always get my arm out of the way of the camera. I didn't always get my hand out of the way of the camera. I didn't focus as much on the focusing of the camera as much as I typically do. And I'd like to apologize for the poor camera work. I'm learning. I am not a professional YouTuber, nor do I play one on TV. But I hope this video is still a benefit to those who have to replace their nozzles. First step is to remove the filament in the printer and raise the print head at least 200 millimeters. Once the print head is raised, you need to power off the machine and remove the power cord. Next step is to remove the four screws on the rear of the extruder housing. I found it was easiest to remove the filament tube, then the top cover, then the front cover, and then the bottom cover of the extruder housing. Once the covers are off, the fan bracket and the fans need to be removed. There are two screws holding the fan bracket to the housing. Once the fan bracket is removed, it exposes the connectors and you need to disconnect the fan connectors and I found that they were hot glued in place for shipping and removal of the hot glue was made especially difficult due to the fragile connectors. Not wanting to strain the wires in the connector, I decided to use a pair of pliers to help me remove the connector. The heating element and thermocouple proved to be even more difficult and when I removed the thermocouple, unfortunately the entire connector came off the board. There we go. I wasn't especially disturbed by this so I just pushed it back on expecting the connection to still be working. Once disconnected I removed the heating jacket 
and then focused on the nozzle removing the two mounting screws. Once the two screws are removed, the nozzle assembly can be removed from the printer. To remove the heat sink, there are four screws, two on the front and two underneath, that need to be removed. So this is the original on the right and the one on the left. So we need to replace the heat sink. There's an additional fifth screw above the heat sink that also needs to be removed. There are two covers on the heat sink that redirect airflow. I decided to remove them one at a time and transfer them to the new heat sink so I could refer back to the original heat sink for their orientation. As the heat sink came pre-assembled with the nozzle, I had to separate the two to install the heat sink back into the printer. For reinstallation, I found it easiest to reverse the removal top screw and then the two bottom screws and then the two front screws. Now it's time for reinstallation of the nozzle. Be sure to include your Bowden tube in the reinstallation. I also decided to install the left screw halfway and then the right screw all the way to try to ensure that they were equally torqued. Now it's time to reconnect the heating element as well as the thermocouple and hope the connector is still functional. Don't forget to install the heat jacket. It was at this point I realized I had not installed the last two screws on the heat sink. time to replace the fan bracket but ensure that you connect the wires before you attach the fan bracket as that lower left uh, connector is a lot harder to get at. It's now time to replace all the covers 
starting with the bottom cover and the single screw. While I show these four screws being reinstalled here, I had to clean out the reduction gear and I did not put these four screws back in and it hasn't hurt performance. And now's the moment we find out if that connector is still working. I auto leveled the bed to make sure it was still calibrated. Once reassembled, I printed this Biggie Tech tool block to service the nozzle. The buildup of filament on the nozzle made it difficult to use the Anchormate wrench, so I decided to use a deep socket quarter inch wrench instead and found it much easier to remove the nozzle. I hand tightened the new nozzle to ensure that I didn't cross thread it. I attached the heat sink so I would not lose any parts. So the big question is, did it fix the issues? For the most part it did. The problem I was having was poor adhesion of layers and it led me to think that the nozzle was bad but it also appears that it could have been a starvation of filament. So I went in and cleaned out the reduction gear which I wish I had done it when I was servicing the hot end. But I cleaned out the reduction gear and I found some burnt pieces of filament and some fragments of filament that were probably causing some issues. But in the end, I was able to clean it out, get the printer working again, and I'm back in business. I do have some videos coming up of uh, those upgrades I had planned. I also have videos coming up. I've already did eight different filaments. Well... I've got another eight filaments to share with you. So we're going to see how those work. I'm probably going to do them over a couple of different videos and do it by brand. I've got five different inland filament brands, all PLA. And I've got two different Polymaker filaments to try. Uh, one of the users suggested I try Polymaker Pro. I'm going to. It's coming. And I hope that's going to be in the near future. I'm probably in the next two weeks and then three weeks from now so middle of february um i plan to do the strain test got everything for the test fixture for the strain test so that is in work and we'll see what happens in the meantime have a good day and i'll talk to you later